Number one, angle A measures 60 degrees. So this angle right here is 60 degrees. A, extend the rays of angle A and draw a parallelogram A, B, C, D on the grid paper. Let's draw a parallelogram. Yours doesn't have to be exactly the same as mine because we're just here looking for um, angle measures. So I'm going to extend it and this will be my parallelogram. So we have angle A, B, C, D. So it says what are the measures of angle B, C, and D? Now we know that the, ang the opposite angles are congruent. So angle A and angle C are the same. So angle C is 60 degrees. We also know that all four angles of a quadrilateral are equal to 360 degrees. So if we subtract 60 and 60, that's 120 degrees. We have 240 degrees left to split between B and D. Now we also know that angles B and D are congruent. So B and D are con congruent, which means they are the same. So we just need to evenly split 240 into two groups. So e angle B is 120 degrees, and angle D is 120 degrees. Two, W, X, Y, Z is a parallelogram not drawn to scale. Using what you know about parallelograms, give the measures of sides X, Y, and Y, Z. So we know that the opposite sides of parallelograms are congruent. So if, ang if side WZ would be equal to XY, and WZ is equal to 6 centimeters, so XY is equal to 6 centimeters. Now, XW... Is that what they called it? Let's see, xw would be equal to yz, and that is 3 centimeters. So that information belongs with A. Angle B, or number B, so angle, angle wxy, so angle wxy, meaning this angle right here is equal to 113 degrees. Use what you know about angles in a parallelogram to find the measure of other angles. So if that's 113 degrees, we also know that this angle is 113 degrees. And we can find this angle because it's going to be the one that has Z in the middle. Because, so this one is 113 degrees. Now we know again that they all add up to 360 degrees. So 113 plus 113 is 226. If we subtract that from 360 to see how much we have left, we get 134 degrees left and we need to split that evenly into two pieces so that we can find angle W and angle Y. So we get 67 degrees for both of these angles. Number three, Jack measured some segments in problem two. He found that WY is equal to eight centimeters. So let's find WY, pick a new color here. WY, that is the diagonal. So that diagonal is equal to 8 centimeters. And MZ, let's find MZ. Okay, MZ 
is just right here is equal to three centimeters. Give the lengths of the following segments. So WM, I'm gonna get rid of all this, all this stuff. Okay, so we know WY is eight centimeters. And we know MZ is three centimeters. So give the lengths of the following segments. WM. So WM is from here to here. Now we know that the entire thing is eight centimeters, so half of it where they where they bisect, where these diagonals bisect, is the midway point. So half of that would be four centimeters. MY, the other half from here to here, would be the other four centimeters. So eat they add up to equal the whole, which is eight centimeters. Then we have XM. So from X to M here to here, we know that MZ was three centimeters. These are also congruent, so this is also three centimeters. And then XZ, so X all the way down here to Z, the entire thing, the three centimeters and the three centimeters would give us six centimeters. Using the properties of shapes, explain why all parallelograms are trapezoids. Well, let's think back to what a trapezoid is. So a trapezoid has at least one pair of parallel sides. And a quadrilateral always has two pairs of parallel sides. So if a trapezoid has is always going to have one pair and needs to have at least one pair and a quadrilateral always has two. Two is at least one pair. So a quadrilateral, sorry, I wrote quadrilateral. I should have written parallelogram. So a parallelogram is always a trapezoid because it will always have at least one pair of parallel sides because it has two. Number five, Teresa says that because the diagonals of a parallelogram bisect each other, if one diagonal is 4.2 centimeters, the other diagonal must be half that length. Use words and pictures to explain Teresa's error. I'm going to draw a parallelogram. So she's saying that the diagonals of the parallelogram, so these are the diagonals, bisect each other right there so that's where they bisect if one diagonal is 4.2 centimeters so saying if this diagonal is 4.2 centimeters or four and two tenths centimeters the other must be half that length well here we can already see we don't even need to measure there's no way that that is half that length so half of 4.2 centimeters is two and one tenth centimeter So that's not true. Maybe what she's trying to say is that half of this would be two and one tenth centimeter. So where it bisects, that would be two and one cent two and one tenth centimeter. 